This episode of Agalia Chats is brought to you by Servo, the only web engine to be written in a memory-safe programming language with modularity, embeddability, and parallel computing in mind. Visit servo.org to learn more, and if you love the whole idea, please stop by opencollective.com slash servo to lend your support. Hi, I'm Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate at Agalia. And I'm Eric Meyer, also a developer advocate at Agalia. And our guest today is uh, Paolo. Paolo, could you introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Hello, my name is Paolo, and uh, I'm a compiler engineer at Agalia. Awesome. And uh, we actually invited Paolo on today's show because... Nothing to do with compilers, incidentally. Yeah, in fact, nothing to do with compilers. This is not a compiler show. Um, we may have one of those in the future, but what we're going to talk about today is actually Agalia's corporate social responsibility team, which Paolo is uh, a part of. And I'm, Paolo, could you just sort of describe what CSR for corporate social responsibility is and uh, what Agalia does? Yes, so I'll, I'll try to do my best here. So CSR, I think it's well known in in uh, in general uh, in the business environment. Um, uh, we at uh, at Igalia, I think, have tried to align with that external view uh, of CSR, but also try to do our own thing. As a business, we believe it's essential to operate in an economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable manner, and the idea for CSR uh, is to give back to society in a good way and to say thanks at the com to the communities and the societies we came from. Uh, so not only we donate and support projects uh, that are part of larger organizations, but also much smaller organizations that are local to each Igalian's community. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so this is, you said this is managed in Agalia by a commission. Um, and I, I think just not to go too deep in the weeds, just as a little sort of a side note, um, Agalia being a, a worker-owned cooperative, uh, basically uh, commissions are sort of like task forces in a way within Agalia where a group of people who are interested in uh, working on a particular thing, you know, can form a commission. So we have a CSR commission and that's people within Agalia who have, you know, volunteered to uh, work on, on, on this particular topic. And it's not the only commission, but that's, that's just an example, but yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to add that. I think that, you know, as Paulo said, like, this is a common thing that, corporations have corporate social responsibility and um good for them uh i don't really want to have any of them on the show uh there's a lot of sort of just like greenwashing and it's hard to figure out like the corporate politics and everything i think what makes this an interesting show and what what makes csr interesting at agalia is that we are you know a, a worker owned cooperative like agalia is us there's not this is like just people who are genuinely concerned enough to say, hey, what can we do? Um, and, and makes it like just interesting to talk about. Um, not yeah. not because we, we want to we want credit for it, not because we want to brag, but because we think these things are important and we think that it's interesting the way that Egalia does it. And I think we would be interested in like how do we how do we do more like this hmm. societally yeah. you know right yeah. so uh paulo how how does it work like how how does agalia choose who to give to how you know how much do we give that sort of thing yes that's that's an excellent excellent question i think following what brian just said of you know this Egalis, us, and the CSR is, the CSR commission is very close, I think, to the heart of Egalians. Um, one of the reasons I joined the commission was because um, I just felt that there was, it was a way for me to contribute 
uh, and be able to support um, my local community uh, and CSR in general within Igalia. Uh, and one of the ways we do that, that we have several projects at the moment, but uh, let me start, for example, with our uh, support of NGOs, which was what we started with back in 2007. Um, we have this yearly program uh, where uh, we donate 0.7% of our revenue uh, to support uh, different NGOs. And initially, this started by supporting very large NGOs. So we're talking about UNICEF and Oxfam, uh, Doctors Without Borders, etc. But we have tried and we got to a point where most of the NGOs that we now support are very close to the communities that Igalia work with. And so we have a list of NGOs that we support that we yearly revise. And those NGOs can be, for example, uh, if, if I may uh, talk about my specific example, uh, a that's Fleck, for example, the German NGO from my village that supports um, uh, immigrants' uh, integration in Germany. But we also have an NGO that, for example, uh, adopts and rescues uh, dogs in communities in South Korea. Uh, and we have other small NGOs that support education, etc. But there is always the important thing is that there's always a very strong connection uh, from these smaller NGOs to specific Egalians that are uh, really um, uh, trying to get those NGOs uh, some more um, some donations um, from right. from our from our pot, let's say. Yeah. So I it's interesting. So 0.7% of the corporate revenue, that's so Agalia's revenue. Why 0.7%? That seems like an oddly specific number. Yeah, so I was not involved in the decision back in 2007, but the idea uh, comes from this UN, um, actually quite old, if I'm not mistaken, from 1970, UN recommendation for countries to donate 0.7% their from their gross national in uh, income uh, to uh, development uh, countries. Okay, so yeah, we pick that of, we pick up that number and sort of integrate it into our own um, project. Right. So, sort of looking at established practice or recommendation and saying, "All right, we'll do that too." Um, yeah, and so. You, you mentioned that, like one of the NGOs, an NGO non-governmental organization. Um, one of them is is from where you are, and then you mentioned one in South Korea. Uh, we have, you know, we have Agalians who are located in South Korea, and that's, you know, how we would have heard about those, you know, the the, the NGOs there. Um, yeah, and so what's the so let's say I identify an NGO in Cleveland, which where I live, or Brian identifies one in Pittsburgh where he lives, how would we go about trying to get some of Agalia's CSR contributions to our local NGOs? Yeah, so that's a great question. So what happens is there is an NGO uh, period, uh, sorry, there's a period during the year where we accept NGO applications. There is an Egalian that generally uh, is connected to an NGO in their local community and says, look, I would like this NGO to be part of our donation list of our 0.7% program. Um, and you just have to gather some information. Sometimes that information is available on the website. Uh, in my case, because my NGO is so close to me, I actually go to the meetings and gather that information, but you fill out a form, you send the form, and you sort of like present your NGO in our internal mailing lists to all Igalians so that Igalians get to know the budget and activities of the NGO. And, and then when it comes time to sort of like distribute the money, your NGO is going to be there. Uh, we recently added uh, a request that you 
you ask for other Egalians to also support your NGO so that there's not a lot of um, contributions to a single to a single NGO. So those, the, the Egalians that say, yes, I support your NGO uh, or I commit to supporting your NGO, then uh, actually do contribute some money from their own budget to that NGO. Yeah. So like the thing that's like always been really, really interesting to me is that like there are a lot of worthy causes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Um, like yeah. I don't make enough money to give to all the things that I think are deserving of money, even if it's just a little bit of money to each one of them, you know. I know we can we can maybe list some of the ones that we that we do. Um that you know, like we we listed a couple already, but we also have fun some other things like reforestation projects and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, like how do we how do we choose and it's it's interesting to me. So we we kind of divvy up a little bit. Like you you sort of like you have so many dollars you can sort of allocate, and it's it's hard. It's hard even with like all of this process, all of this process where we identify the ones that that can. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm curious for for both of your thoughts on this. Just as a as a as a fellow galleon, like when it comes to that time of year, like. I honestly struggle. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So first, I think I need to clarify something, okay. which is I started talking about our NGO program, the 0.7% program, because it was the first one that sort of like kickstarted the CSR commission back in 2007. But uh, then uh, Brian just mentioned reforestation. Now, reforestation is outside that program and it has its own budget. So the CR CSR budget in total is more than 0.7% of EGALI's revenue. Uh, so, for example, for reforestation projects, we have at the moment 0.3%. Um, so, 0. so we have 0.7% for NGOs. And then if we take a step back uh, and look at the CSR work, we have mainly three things we had in, we're having a couple of others we had a couple of others in the past but we have mainly three things on a regular basis that's our ngo program that's our social investments which we haven't touched yet and our reforestation projects that have been going uh for the last few years yeah. and one thing that we can mention is, for example, we also had a program during the COVID times where we supported um uh, NGOs outside this budget to donate uh, vaccines uh, to development countries. And sort of like, even though we have a few continuing uh, activities, um, mm. there are also some things that sometimes we contribute to because they are necessary. Mm. One, a, a, an example is, for example, contributing, uh, donating to supporting the people uh, who lost their homes in in Brazil due to the floods uh, even a few months ago. So there are some ongoing things that we support and we always keep an eye on. And the things that we have on a regular basis, like the NGOs, the social investments and reforestation, it's something that we track, but it's not everything that we do. One thing that it's worth pointing out is that the NGOs is one part of what we do and how the CSR Commission was created. I think I mentioned that earlier, but we have other projects over the last few years that were suggested and were sort of like uh, been contributing to for a few years. The idea, one of them is the idea of social investments. Uh, and the idea was created because what happens with NGOs is that we, you know, gather that amount of money on a yearly basis per NGO on our list. And then we transfer the money to the NGO and don't necessarily track the amount of impact it had, don't necessarily track where that money was used on. Um, and we wanted to be able to have specific investments uh, slash projects that we could invest in, that we could track the impact it had on the communities, on the society, on, you know, things that we could sometimes maybe even photograph or or visit. Uh, and so we've been uh, every year also gathering an idea of projects 
from Egalians, CSR, CSR Commission, we have also had our suggestions, uh, but Egalians have also suggested uh, a few of them on a yearly basis, which we have contributed to. And examples are like, for example, uh, uh, last year, uh, we supported the acquisition of specialist push chairs to participate um, uh, for two uh, runners with the disabilities to participate in the New York Marathon. Uh, or, for example, we uh, have a project to build a library in Yof in Senegal. So these are things that we transfer uh, uh, we have few per year, but it's a larger amount of money. Uh, we transfer this money and then we track the, the, the project from its inception until its conclusion. We receive, you know, in the case of the library, we have received photographs of the, the library being built, the material for the library being acquired, and so on and so forth. And we have a few of these, and I think every year we try to commit to two or three projects. Um, and these are projects that are measurable. Um, so these are very interesting as well, because Egalians can say, well, I have, you know, uh, I need an investment of, I don't know, 30, 40, 50,000 uh, euros for something in my community. Uh, this is an interesting project for XYZ. Uh, can we include that in our social investments for this year? Um, and then uh, that, that uh, is evaluated by the commission. And, you know, if accepted, it's something that we will track and make sure that things will go according to plan. And we'll let, let uh, e the whole of Igalia know um, how things are going. Okay. Yeah. So I, when I was saying NGOs, that was a little bit lazy <laughs> in a sense, though, since it's not just NGOs. That, but that's good, good to know. And, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about this? Paolo, I mean, you're on the commission, so I guess you're in support, but like, why, what caused you to join the commission? Yeah. Um, as I, I sort of referred to it at the beginning, but for me, uh, the CSR commission is us, is, is all of the Galleons. This money that we are, that we are donating, that we are contributing is not, uh, you know, it, it's it's our money because w the way we're structured, uh, this money is literally money that we don't pay ourselves. But it allows us to, instead of privately uh, contributing a small amount, it allows us to uh, harness the power of Egalia as a consultancy and the power of several uh, Egalians all over the world to contribute to something that, you know, has an impact on my community. Um, and, you know, I live in a very small village. We're about 4,000 people. And the fact that uh, the NGO that, that I support and I have uh, added to um, that it's in the, our CSR commission NGO list, um, you know, has had uh, – terrific impact on my community and that's something that I couldn't uh, that couldn't uh, couldn't have happened otherwise and I think just like my example many many cases uh, around the world for other Igalians it's also a way for them to have an impact on their communities um, where they're not privately um, privately supporting but harnessing the mm -hmm. the whole power of Igali of the CSR uh, commission to to be able to improve their um, to to improve their their own communities around them and their, their society around them. I think that's I think that's very powerful. Um, and I, I joined the commission because I thought I could help um, that could help with with this um, with this initiative. Yeah, and I mean, of course, every Agalian can also individually contribute to whatever charity as yeah. they like. And I'm, I'm sure that in many cases, the NGOs that Agalians or the, the charities or whatever, the social programs that Agalians uh, get into the, into sort of our CSR program and harness that collective 
support from Magalia are also contributing individually. But yeah, it, it does. It, it, I mean, this whole, the whole procedure, when, when you describe it, it sounds very sort of mechanical and I guess in a sense it is, but it's a way of, it's a structured way of sort of coming to collective agreement about, you know, what would we like to collectively give aid to? Let's, let's sort of formalize this so that we can actually concentrate on, on getting to results. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it's the sort of thing that w- when I joined, I was like, Oh wow. How does, how does that work? Um, and wh- why is it, why is it so formalized? But I've really come to appreciate that process of, okay, collectively we're going to sort of vote on, or at least collectively participate in a process that picks a list of programs, NGOs, charities, social programs, et cetera, to then determine how much of our collective funding will be, you know, apportioned to each group. Mm-hmm. Um, that I've I've really come to appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course, none of these. Uh, th- there is a process. We sort of like need a process with the amount of people that we have at this point to yeah. organize all the contributions. But this does not deny the fact that at any point, if there is a calamity, if there is some some something that needs urgent help in your right. community, in the community of Samigalian, that they cannot come and people cannot come and say, "Hey, my community needs help." Uh, how we're going to be able to help this community, and and that that it's something that we do on a yearly basis, right? Out outside outside these things that we've been discussing, the social investments and the NGO, and even the for- reforestation projects that we haven't even touched. Well, let, let, let's touch them. Yeah, sure. I mean, the reforestation projects are actually uh, very very interesting uh, projects. Um, that started uh, a few years ago, and they are really um, something that we have been going now back to it on year after year, uh, where we have a dedicated budget outside social investments, outside the NGO, 0.7% NGO contributions, uh, where we contribute to reforestation, to not just to improve things now, but to make sure things are better in the future. At the moment, all of our reforestation projects are located in uh, in or near in Galicia, because you know, as you know, Igali is based there, and it's those who suggested to start these projects uh, found it easier to to run a reforestation project near us. Uh, we actually had the opportunity a few years ago, and even this year, last time we met uh, in A Coruña, to go and visit uh, uh, one of the Igalia forests. So uh, projects that uh, we had where we did reforestation of a large area. Um, and so we, are, we keep increasing the area that we're trying to do reforestation. And this means that by reforestation, I mean, we are removing the invasive trees in these areas and uh, planting uh, native forest. This reduces the chances of fires. This increases, um, this increases the fauna and flora of the area to return or to uh, improve. And, one thing that we would like to do, uh, and that's one of our plans for the future, is to actually be able to bring these reforestations closer to other Igalians. So let's say, Eric, that you have, you know, of a, a, the need for to do reforestation somewhere nearby. Uh, that's something that we're interested in knowing about. Um, and so we are trying to, to, to do reforestation work outside of Galicia, but at the moment, uh, all of the forests that we are uh, working on are, are, are in Galicia. We recently did a show with Robin Bergeon that was about rewilding, and like the, the analogy here is there are invasive species in a lot of cases, like they were planted for some kind of profit motive, right? Like cut down a whole bunch of trees and then planted them. That was very short-sighted. It, it like really 
decreased the biodiversity. Like there's all kinds of problems with that. And so like reforestation is actually really, really interesting, you know, and that makes me think about like also global warming and CO2. And I just wanted to bring up that this is another thing that Agalia does. You know, we, we talk a lot about like, what is our carbon footprint and like, how do we, how do we keep it low? How do we, what, like, what can, what kind of things can we do? And I think like we talk about this in kind of real and concrete ways where we're looking for actions that we can take and then discussing them as opposed to just sort of, I don't know, donating some money for carbon offsets as, and then saying, yay, us <laughs> as a corporation, you know, um, I like, I believe that we have positive impact and that Egalians care. I think that's really interesting. And I would like to know if maybe like you've thought about like cooperating with like recently Val, we had a show with her as well on co-ops and she gave a great talk. There was a, a big event. Like, I wonder if we'd thought about like, cooperating with other co-ops or, or discussing with other co-ops like what they do do they do anything here how do they do it and maybe looking at whether there's something that a galleons can do larger than just a galleon itself yeah that's that's a great comment and actually that brings me to sort of like the next thing there are many things that we talk about but the next thing that that i wanted to mention is that you know even internally csr tries to improve things like you mentioned um uh you're talking about uh carbon footprint we have we have sort of like trying to promote uh the introduction uh as an alternative to normal menus uh, the introduction of vegan menus uh we have promoted the use of ethical banks uh where we keep uh, our money. Uh, we have invested uh, in renewable energy co-ops in the past. Um, and we also have, for example, an initiative uh, that we call the Green New Deal, where we're trying to find um, a business line where we can contribute on a regular basis while at the same time um, fighting climate change for example so so we have a, a few things and now going back to what you just mentioned which is the co-op relations that's something that we're very interested on and we have actually uh now a couple of egalians trying to take that up which is how can we with what we learned uh running a co-op and the impact that we can have uh how can we learn from others and also pass on the knowledge that we've gathered over the past 20 years um, on how to run a co-op and how to uh, make decisions within the co-op and uh, even try to understand what other co-ops are doing in terms of CSR that we can do, that we might learn from them. So there is indeed uh something going on it's ramping up so this year we have a few people uh two people uh actually trying to get this off the ground and trying to contact other co-ops and so on yeah what else should we talk about with all of this what have we not touched on it's can we talk about this this, this fact that like it, it is very tricky to to talk about this kind of stuff and not feel like you know you're you're just saying showing off <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah you know like yeah right no i mean it, no it's a it's a tricky thing right because we believe these things are important we believe that uh, agalia's approach to them is interesting and novel and we we like talking about the causes that we're concerned about because it also helps bring more attention to those causes i guess that's a it is a tricky thing because like when i you know, no offense to whatever, whoever, but when I see their corporate social responsibility posts and things like that, you know, I'm whatever. I don't really believe that they care. And Egalia is like really not just like some some board somewhere or some tiny little faction of the company, but like Egalia itself is is trying and cares. And I Yeah, I think I have a 
a very close connection to the CSR Commission because um, I can see, I can feel um, the impact it has, uh, again, on the community I live in. Uh, so I can give you the example that the first year that uh, the NGO that I supported doubled its budget because of CSR, of the CSR Commission, of the contribution of oligallians. And that's something that wow. it wouldn't be possible otherwise. So there was, you know, more meetups. There were more bikes distributed uh, for immigrant children to go to school. There were more books bought. There were there was more medicine bought for everyone. So there is a a real feeling that this has an impact. So I think one of the differences about the CSR, uh, let's say, program in Igali is that it is run by all of us. And the people in the commission are really just sort of like being the accountants and the secretaries for everyone else, right? I mean, tomorrow, if you want to propose an NGO in your community that needs help, you know, you can do that and you can see the change. Uh, yes, it will take you some time, but it's something that you that you can do. You have the power to do that. And I think in larger organizations, it might be difficult or even impossible, right, to, for you to support the NGO down your road. And I think that's, that's very, very powerful. Yeah. Part of the thing that's difficult to balance about this is like, I am really proud to work here. I mean, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love my coworkers. <laughs> like, I think we're don't have to be bashful about that. Yeah, That's... no, I mean, I guess you don't have to be bashful about that, but I'm, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I really love the way we work and, um, you know, how we interact and, uh, what the CSR does and so on. Yeah. So why don't you tell us more about this green new deal thing? Okay. So we're all sort of like technical people with knowledge in diverse, um, technologies, how can we use our technical knowledge to try to improve things? And by improve things, I mean, have an impact, for example, in climate change um, uh, and or, or many others. For example, um, I'll, I'll give a couple of examples in a minute, but in a summit a few years ago, there was an activity where we gathered up Igalians and we asked uh, several for people to separate into separate groups and to explain uh, or to come up with an idea of a project that they would like to see implemented under the, this Green New Deal with the heading that we could use our technical knowledge to uh, achieve something for the well-being of the planet. And we had great ideas. We had people suggesting that we could uh, try to invest uh, in tracking um, uh, oil spills we had. And one was this idea of trying to improve the supporting technology of GP GPU, which is used nowadays, obviously used for uh, LLM training, but also used for uh, climate modeling. Yeah. And so we had... Uh, the, the climate modeling was the intent of the proposal. It was. Yes. Yes. So this yeah. was a this was even this discussion was even before obviously LLMs took the took over the discussion about uh, GPGPU. So uh, so this was the the idea of um, the idea of the Green Deal. So this it's this is not finished. This is an idea that we're still working on. We had an investment to try to understand exactly and try to pinpoint exactly where we could have an impact in GPGPU how it connects with climate modeling. We had that investment last year, and now we're trying to understand where can we take these next. Right. So it's it's a Gallia's Green New Deal. In America, there's a thing called Green New Deal that gets circulated around. This is, they're not the same thing. I see. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's uh, something that we just called it Green New Deal internally, and it's stuck, but it's disconnected from American politics. Yes. So... One of the things I like about Agalia here again is that, you know, in technology, we have this like, I don't know. Hubris. Like, 
yeah, hubris. Exactly. We have this hubris um, that is sort of rampant that, you know, like, hey, I'm just going to casually disrupt transportation. I think I can do that, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, or I'm going to disrupt the hotel industry or uh, whatever. Like, I think I can disrupt medicine, you know, mm -hmm. um, we look at everything as if it's just like it's well, it's only a technological problem. Um, finance, we're going to disrupt finance, right? Like, I'm not saying that, like, there's not huge room for improvements in all of those things and that technology can't like you, you absolutely can. It's just, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have this like very, this hubris that we, that we can minimize things and like, Oh, fools. We could <laughs> like, yeah. we could just solve climate change with this one cryptocurrency. Yeah, you know? whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, and what I like about these is that like, it's not that right. Like it's, it's some small things that are like, that are, they're practical things. Like they're, they're like really things where, there are opportunities where it is totally within the realm of possibility that a galley can help with these things. And one of the things I've noticed in these proposals has been that rather than having the hubris to think, oh, we'll do this thing and solve it, it has sort of the opposite of how can we help the people who know what they're doing do it better? That very much, I think, is suffuses the the ethos of the entire sort of what we're doing with CSR and with the projects that we propose, it's not how can we fix this? It's how can we help people who know what they're doing fix this? Yeah, absolutely. I think that we have conscience that we don't know most of what needs to be done, mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of technical knowledge that we want to try to apply uh, in this area. So we also... This is not work for a client. Uh, so it's sort of like our own investment to try to understand uh, if we can help in any way. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of like just one step further. It's not trying to obviously solve the whole problem, which we know it's inherently very complex. I, I would like to just add to that. Um, that doesn't mean that we would not like to do this work for a client, we would very much welcome if there are some, you know, research organizations or things with like government funding that like are interested in actually tackling these problems and need, you know, technical work. That would be awesome. We would, and we'd love to do that, I think. Right. But yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, achieving a goal and being paid for it at the same time, uh, then great. But if not, if we can contribute, that in itself is sufficient. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, um, you know, before we wrap up here, what's what's the forward view for CSR and, and related efforts in Agalia? Yes. Uh, in terms of vision that we have for the future, we have still these regular investments in the 0 0.7 NGO program, the social investments, reforestation projects. But as we said, we have this ongoing interest in this Green New Deal, um, which we will continue to uh, invest on and try to understand where we can uh, have an impact. Uh, and then there's also the co-op relations that we talked about uh, earlier on in the podcast, uh, which is about trying to learn more uh, and also share what we learned um, with other co-ops. And so we're in the process of contacting uh, some of them and going to meetups and try to understand, um, yes, well, how we can have um, create this shared knowledge among co-ops um, that not only we can contribute uh, to, but also um, uh, learn from. Yeah, I guess that's um, all from my side. Great. Paolo, I don't think we could end it any better place, so we're just going to say thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much uh, for uh, taking the time to learn about the CSR Commission, um, and I'll see you around. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bye.